Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. New details on the just concluded presidential elections are still emerging. Earlier today, Jubilee Party, led by its Secretary General, Jeremiah Cuny, called a press statement where they revealed some very disturbing information. Information I want us to have a look at in this video to see exactly what they mean politically. Before we do that, in case you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Yes. Before we continue, I want you to listen to a bit of the press statement by Jubilee Party. Listen into this. What happened within Mount Kenya was massive, massive leaking. And the leaking was done not by the employment of one scheme, but multiple schemes that were all aimed at taking votes from candidates who had anything to do with Jubilee and also from our presidential candidate Raira Amoro Odinga together with the running mate Mother Wagari Karua. The recruitment of PO Nakuru for example, Nakuru County, 10 out of the 11 deputy returning officers, 10 out of the 11 deputy returning officers were from one tribe. The 11th one was from Turkana. All the other 10 were from the one, one tribe. Hata kama ni kabila yako we mwenye hata we unahaya. But in Nyeri County, Dathi Porting Station, Kafar Ward, Kieni, Barot, Papers got finished for the women. Where they got others, they would tell us. But they got finished. They also got finished at Kiawa Thangi. Eh? Kiawa Idanji. At Agodi. Ini Wapi. Agodi Gaki won. Ah, yes, Agodi Gaki won in Tetu. The ballot papers got finished. At the way, you listen. Ballot papers are Mtumojas Mekwisha. The one you get. Yes. That press statement reveals very interesting details and information where we are finding that in a polling station people are voting till midnight and then in some areas <laughs> ballot papers get finished <laughs> people vote until now there are no more ballot papers very interesting but above all there are things that are coming out clearly first of all there is the issue of the recruitment of the returning officers. We are, we are getting that IBC invited applications and the deadline was on 5th, May 2022. But by 25th, April 2022, Wafula Bukati had gazetted the returning officers, an indication that already they had <coughs> They had people who are standby. People who are just going to take those positions. So the ad advertisement for the applications was just to hoodwink Kenyans. And I honestly believe that the returning officers were effectively used to rig the elections. And also we have been told that in a place like in Nakuru, Nakuru County, almost all deputy presiding officers were from the same tribe. In fact, out of 11 deputy returning officers, 10 were from the same tribe. Only one was from Turukana. 10 most likely were Kalenjins. And then from that press statement, there is also the issue of agents. We are curious just revealing that their agents were blocked from the polling stations. And the excuse was that they, don't, they, they didn't have stamped budgets. 
So it appears to me that the issue of stamped budgets, <laughs> that was an information that was communicated to one side of the political divide, but not the other. And that was meant to be defranchise one side of the political divide. And also if you tie it to what we saw in Kakamega and in Mombasa, gubernatorial elections, then it just shows that William Ruto and Wafulache Bukati had their plans laid out very well and properly. And their plan was to make sure they do all they could to maybe dissuade or rather discourage some people mostly in Raila strongholds from turning out to vote. And we are also just seeing the agents are also just being blocked here. And then the issue of the turnout is also imagine that turnout was not what Chebukati told us. Because from Chebukati, we were being told that turnout, was, turnout on the mountain was around 68-70%. Kion is making it very clear that the turnout was lower than 40%. And I, I can agree with Jeremiah Kioni because I still remember, immediately the polls were closed, a returning officer in Nyeri <laughs> made it very clear that turnout in Nyeri, which most likely was the highest in the Mount Kenya counties, stood at around 48 to 50 percent. And that was probably the highest turnout on the mountain. And Wafula Chebukati put the turnout at around 70 percent. So the votes were also just inflated using the turnouts. So you can see clearly that William Ruto, if at all, you are to remove the fake votes, then William Ruto in Vatraila beats William Ruto very easily. And then the issue of also assisted voters, we are the returning officers, or rather the presiding officers, were directing the, the assisted voters into voting for only order and order candidates. That's coming out very, very clearly. So above all, as I conclude, all this just proves and shows clearly that indeed what we saw was not a presidential election, but a party nomination. A nomination where Ruto and Wafula Chebukati were fully in charge. There was nothing like a presidential election. Let me leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. But just as I did indicate when we were starting, in case you are watching us for the very first time, but so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. And to our fans and subscribers here, I'm very much humbled, very grateful for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you. God bless Kenya.